The Eerie Story of Zumra Baker began on quiet fall day in rural Hickory, North Carolina. A little girl with flaming red hair and a playful smile went missing from her home, leaving behind a distraught father and stepmother who claimed she had been kidnapped. But as police dug deeper into the case, they uncovered a much darker and horrific tale, one of deception, abuse, and ultimately murder. The town of Hickory, nestled in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, seemed an unlikely setting for such unfathomable evil. A close-knit community of some 40,000 residents, Hickory enjoyed small-town charm coupled with the amenities of a mid-sized city. Despite the outwardly peaceful atmosphere, trouble was brewing within the walls of the Baker family's single-wide trailer. In this video, we will examine Zara's background, the events leading up to her disappearance and murder, and the investigation that followed. There are still many unanswered questions about what truly happened to this innocent child. We may never fully understand what she endured in her final days. But by exploring the known details of her case, we can honor Zara's memory and ensure her story is never forgotten. The story of Zara's short life and tragic end contains all the elements of a chilling mystery that would captivate the world. Hello guys, and welcome back to Crimeco, where we analyze some of the most extreme true crime cases from around the globe, providing detailed up-to-date information. If that interests you, please subscribe and like this video to help support the channel. Now, let's dive into this case. The details of Zora Baker's short life read like a Shakespearean tragedy, filled with both resilience and heartbreak. Zara Claire Baker was born on November 16, 1999 in Wagga Wagga, Australia to then 18-year-old Emily Dietrich and 20-year-old Adam Baker. Emily struggled with postpartum depression after Zara's birth and relinquished custody to Adam when the girl was only a few months old. Adam raised Zara with his parents in Juru, Queensland until 2005 when she was diagnosed with bone cancer at age 5. Zara underwent treatment that resulted in the amputation of her left leg below the knee and required hearing aids as well. Despite these hardships, Zara was described as a happy, resilient child with a bubbly personality. But her short life would take another tragic turn after her father Adam met 42-year-old Elisa Fairchild online. The two married in 2008, and Adam moved with Zara to the United States to be with Elisa in Hickory, North Carolina. Soon, reports of brutal medical neglect and psychological abuse began to surface, indications that all was not well behind closed doors. When 10-year-old Zara was reported missing on October 9, 2010, few could have imagined the gruesome details that would eventually come to light. Neighbors reported frequent neglect and abuse at Elisa's hands, including be that left Zara bruised injured. They also reported frequent fights between Adam and Elisa. And over the previous months, Child Protective Services had made four visits to the home in response to allegations of abuse toward Zara. Bruises and burns on the girl's body were routinely dismissed by Elisa as accidents due to Zara's handicap. The child's health rapidly deteriorated as Elisa withheld her medications. Teachers at Zara's elementary school noticed signs of mis- and filed reports with Child Protective Services, who investigated the Baker home on four occasions in 2010. Voices were either ignored or dismissed, and no action was taken to shield Zara from Elisa's Zara's once luminous smile faded, and her spirit slowed wilted under Elisa's constant barrage of verbal and psychological attacks. On September 24, 2010, authorities believe Zara died of undetermined violence at the hands of Elisa. Though Elisa claimed she found the child unresponsive that afternoon, she did not call for help. Instead, she enlisted Adam's assistance to dismember Zara's body and scatter the remains. The next two weeks, Elisa and Adam concocted a cover story involving a ransom note before reporting Zara missing on October 9th. 
but the massive search that followed would expose the nightmare that had been Zora's final days. The discovery of Zara's remains marked the beginning of a grim unraveling of the truth surrounding her death. On October 10, 2010, just one day after Zara was reported missing, authorities searched the Baker home with cadaver dogs. The dogs alerted to the scent of human remains on both Adam and Lisa's vehicles. Police also took swabs of what appeared to be stains. That same day, Elisa was arrested for unrelated charges as well as obstruction of justice after admitting to writing the phony ransom note. Officials soon confirmed that Elisa's story of Zara being kidnapped did not match evidence or witness accounts. On October 26, investigators discovered Zora's prosthetic leg wrapped in a trash bag and discarded in a dumpster. Elisa eventually began leading police to locations where she and Adam had disposed of Zara's remains, including her discarded body parts, comforter with stains, and mattress. Despite Elisa's claims that Adam was involved in dismembering and disposing of Zara's body, evidence showed that only Elisa, not Adam, was in the areas her remains were found on the days in question. Authorities now believe Elisa was solely responsible for Zora's disappointment. Also, police noted several inconsistencies in Elisa Baker's story that indicated her guilt in Zora's death. Cell phone records placed Elisa alone in Caldwell County, where Zara's remains were ultimately found. I pled guilty to him, I didn't do, and it wasn't even a I got scared. Started doing CPR. The afternoon of September 24th, the day authorities believe Zara was Meanwhile, cell tower records showed Adam was 20 miles away in Conover, confirmed by witness accounts. A review of Elisa's MySpace page after Zara's disappearance showed she posted God and more content that portrayed Zara in a disturbing light. Photos of Zara on the page were titled The Child Lull and Elisa's mood was listed as crazy the day before Zara was reported missing. Elisa had a long history of instability, bigamy, and dishonesty. She had been married seven times, often to multiple men at once, and left a trail of debt, unpaid bills, and police charges wherever she went. At the time of her arrest, Elisa was involved in an online relationship with a man in London who had sent her over $1,000 over the course of a year. Elisa's abuse of Zara began even before they moved to North Carolina. Teachers at Zara's elementary school in Caldwell County noticed signs of mistreatment, but Elisa pulled Zara out of school under the guise of homeschooling her. Though Adam Baker was initially considered a suspect in Zara's death, Police ultimately cleared him of any wrongdoing due to a lack of credible evidence. Cell phone records and witness accounts placed Adam miles away from where Zara's remains were discovered at the time she is believed to have Despite this, Adam faced public outrage for apparently failing to know his own daughter was dead for two weeks before Elisa reported her missing. While investigators acknowledged finding Adam's claims difficult to believe at first, after 80 hours of interrogation they determined he likely had no role in Zara's murder or dismemberment. Adam Baker subsequently returned to Australia after police cleared him. His combination of Navy, lack of parenting skills and failure to detect signs of Elisa's cr earned him public scorn for not doing more to protect his daughter. However, Authorities maintained there was no evidence suggesting Adam played any part in Zara's death. Elisa, meanwhile, was adamant throughout her confession that Adam participated in dismembering Zara's body, though police dismissed this claim due to the lack of corroborating evidence. Phone records, witness accounts, and physical evidence all pointed to Elisa alone being responsible for Zara's death and body dismemberment. While no official cause of could be determined, Elisa was ultimately indicted for second-degree murder and pleaded guilty in order to avoid the death penalty. She was sentenced to 15 to 18 years in prison. Many questions surrounding Zara's death remain unanswered. Officials do not know for certain how Zara died, though medical examiners concluded the manner of 
death was undetermined died. Though Elisa provided some details during her confession, she has never fully revealed how she carried out the heinous acts that took Zara's life. What could drive a woman to mute her 10-year-old stepchild in such a monstrous fashion? Investigators have pieced together potential motives. Elisa grew jealous of the love and attention Adam devoted to Zara. She resented Zara's disabilities. Zara may have also become a target for Elisa's rage when she had basic accidents. It seems Elisa simply viewed Zara as an inconvenient burden blocking her path. With Zara gone, she eliminated a hated obstacle and gained Adam's undivided affection in her mind. But even these motives cannot fully explain the pure evil visited upon an innocent child. Zara Baker's biological mother, Emily Dietrich, never had the chance to properly know her daughter. She relinquished custody to Adam Baker shortly after Zara's birth due to postpartum depression, then spent years trying unsuccessfully to locate the girl. Emily discovered Zara was living in the U.S. just days before she was reported missing in October 2010. She had no idea Adam had taken Zara to North Carolina until it was too late. I never got to say goodbye. I never even got to say hello, Emily said, adding that she wondered whether Zara was cold, or is she somewhere the sun always shines? Is she wet, or does she feel the warmth of swimming through a wonderful dream? Emily apologized for her depression, causing her to abandon Zara as a baby, saying, We are trying to understand how such horrible things can happen to beautiful people. During Elisa Baker's sentencing hearing, Emily called Zara's thing, saying her daughter was treated like a piece of meat and fed to the wildlife. Meanwhile, Adam Baker blamed Elisa for betraying Zara's trust, saying, Elisa, I trusted you with the most precious thing in my life. You not only lied to me, you lied to Zara. Though Elisa expressed remorse and apologized for the hurt she has caused, Zara's senseless left her birth parents and loved ones with anguish, unanswered questions, and the painful knowledge that no punishment could truly make amends for the horror Zara suffered at the hands of someone who was supposed to cherish and protect her. While the ending to Zara's story offers little solace, honoring her memory through advocating for vulnerable children, seeking reforms, and shining a light on systemic failures, offers hope of preventing similar tragedies and bringing consolation amidst unimaginable loss. Zara Baker's tragic death at the age of 10 highlights how vulnerable children can fall through the cracks despite warning signs and reports to authorities. While Elisa Baker's cruelty ultimately stole Zara's life, the failures of Child Protective Services, law enforcement, and Zara's own father to detect and intervene in her suffering must also be acknowledged. In the end, only Elisa knows the full truth of how and why she committed such heinous acts against a helpless child in her care. But instead of focusing on one deeply troubled individual, society must examine the systemic failures that allowed Zara to endure years of abuse no protection. We must demand reforms, increased funding, and improved training for social workers, teachers, and caregivers to better detect and respond to signs of child abuse and medical neglect. While justice and comfort will forever be denied to Zora Baker, Honoring her memory through advocating for policies that protect vulnerable children offers hope of preventing similar senseless tragedies. Though Zora's short life was made by hardship, her story can serve as a catalyst for positive change that seeks to shield other children from suffering the unspeakable horrors that she endured. Let Zora's spirit live on through our efforts to reform the systems that failed her and through our resolve to shine light into darkness so that no defenseless child ever has to endure what she endured. Though we can never bring Zara back, we can honor her memory through working to create a world where no child's life is seen as disposable or their pain invisible. Zara Claire Baker deserved so much better in life. Now, in death, she deserves no less than our relentless pursuit of justice through protecting other vulnerable children and advocating for the reforms that could have saved her. 
Let her story stir within us the determination to make her passing a catalyst for change. One life lost that could ultimately save so many more. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the latest true crime cases. We appreciate having you as part of our community as we explore the mysteries that continue to fascinate us all. Stay curious and remember justice may stay hidden in the darkest corner. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.